Today you once again join me in my home county in Essex, England. This boat was built in 1993, has an LOA of 32 feet and 6 inches, a beam of 11 feet and 6 inches and a draft of just 2 feet and 1 inch. She has a displacement of 9,000 kilograms and is made from GRP. The boat is powered by a single John Deere 6.8 litre 270 horsepower inboard engine which gives the boat a top speed of around 15 knots. She can also carry 400 litres of fuel and around 100 litres of fresh water. Before I show you around, don't forget to give the video a like. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember, if you're interested in buying, selling or chartering a boat, check out my micro site. There's lots of information and resources on there. You'll find a link in the video description and I'll pin a link in the comments as well. As my subscribers probably already know, I love boats which are designed to be used all year round in the sort of weather conditions which will keep most people alongside. And in particular, I love boats that have similar lines to working vessels. When I saw this Loking 33 on the hard at this boatyard in Essex, I thought I would jump on board and take a look around. Before we get on board, let's head over to the stern. You will notice the skeg, something that is really important when you are operating a boat in tidal areas, like where I am now in Essex. The boat's hull is configured for semi-displacement and so we have some trim tabs fitted to the transom for when you want to get somewhere a little bit quicker. Make sure you stay tuned because we will go into more technical details later on in the video. One of the things that drew me to this boat in particular is her resemblance to some of the pilot boats which operate around the east coast of England. I absolutely love pilot boats, so to find a leisure boat like this one that has some of the characteristic lines of pilot boats made me more enthusiastic to jump on board and take a look around. As we walk around the upper deck, straight away you will notice the flush decks which will allow water to quickly head back into the sea so when you are pushing through those big waves, you won't have to worry about water accumulating on the deck. Personally, I like to call boats like these coastal explorers. They are like the smaller cousins of some of the larger explorer yachts which I feature on my channel. From this perspective looking aft, we really do get an appreciation of how this boat's design lends itself to operating in harsh weather conditions, which for me is all part of the boating experience. Over here on the aft section of the coach roof, as I guide myself along using the grab rails, we find the life raft which you don't often find on a boat that is 33 foot LOA. Personally, I always would advocate installing a life raft on a boat like this. The enclosed cockpit awning and cockpit cushions were replaced in 2023. Let me know what you think of the exterior of this boat. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I can't tell you how nice it is to now be protected from that wind. But this area here, really nice, open cockpit, lots of space in here. These seats were recently re-upholstered as well, so they're in really good condition. But yeah, I like the U-shaped seating here. Great place, obviously, come back, sit, relax, enjoy the view whilst you're underway. Under here, we've got some storage as well, which put whatever you want in there, your fenders, your lines, or anything else you might want to kind of take with you and store away. Let's pan the camera around. You just about see the shaft there for the engine as well. Yeah, look, you see some fenders over there on the starboard side. Okay, let's shut that. I really do love the look of these. Boats that have a pilot boat type feel to them. They just feel extremely capable, extremely rugged boat that you can take out in more or less any conditions around the coast, obviously. But let's step inside the saloon. I'll take you around and show you the accommodation as well. So we take a step up into the saloon and check out that helm position. It really does feel like you're on a work boat, a commercial boat. Obviously, it's a private boat. It's not a commercial boat. It's not a pilot boat, but it has that feel to it. Over here on the port side, you've got a raised seating area. So you can sit two people up here and look at the view you get. The windows in this saloon really are quite big. If I sit over here and give you the angle that you can see while sat over here. But again, one of the ways you know you're on a boat that's made for the gnarly stuff, these grab rails, look at these big sturdy grab rails on the overhead. 
one on the pool side and one over there on the starboard side as well. But yeah, you can sit here, enjoy a coffee, enjoy a beer, whatever it is you want to bring with you when you're exploring the coast. Right, let's head over here onto the starboard side. Open this up. Got some storage, so if you want to keep your paper charts or anything else stowed away in there, great space for keeping stuff. Let's have a look over on the helm position. I sit on the helm seat. I must admit, I do have a preference for helm positions on the starboard side as opposed to the port side. Uh, but that's obviously probably coming from a country where we drive on the right side as opposed to the left. But yeah, if we pan around, you can see the double doors, obviously one of them shut, uh, one of them is open, but you can have both of those open so you can connect seamlessly into the cockpit and enjoy that experience of having an indoor and outdoor uh, socializing space. Back over onto the helm, we've got the throttle control lever, obviously over there for the single engine. Uh, Rain Marine Electronics, multi-function display uh, over there. And obviously you've got the controls for the John Deere engine, including the RPM, PSI, volt, engine temperature as well. Over here we've got the switches for the wipers, the lights, cabin lights, and over there on the port side of the helm position, got controls for the bilge pump and a few other things as well. On the brow, got analog clock over there and some VHF radios. Never have too many radios on a boat. I like the ship's wheel as well. And I love these. I think these, I don't know what the technical term is for one of these, but I think they should be on all boats because they make boat handling a lot easier when you just grab onto something and spin that wheel quickly with one hand. But yeah, as you can see, you get a great view when you're operating the boat, 360 degree view all around. The tide's actually coming in. Most of the times when I come here and film, the tide's out, and people always say in the video, how can you be in a marina when there's just mud? But obviously, we're in a tidal area. Uh, if you look under there, you've got some speakers, one there and another one over there on the port side, so you can crank up your favourite music, your favourite tunes whilst underway, uh, and enjoying that summer sun, if it ever comes, which hopefully it won't be long until things start warming up around here. Over here we've got the controls for the heater, so it does have a diesel heater on this boat as well. Um, so if you are operating this boat in the colder areas or colder climates, you know, this is an all year round boat, you still can keep nice and toasty and warm. Let's have another little look at the uh, cockpit. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But first, let's spin around 180 and head forward. So we descend two steps now down into the galley and dinette area. So we've got a galley over here on the port side, a twin gas burner, got a microwave, nice decent sized windows in here as well. So you're getting lots of natural light. A sink over there and underneath the sink, uh, we have a fridge with some more storage uh, just forward of that as well. So yeah, really nice, workable, practical galley here. Uh, enough space and enough utilities uh, to cook up a decent meal uh, when you're going away you know, for the weekend or a week or maybe even longer. Over here on the starboard side, U-shaped uh, seating, but also this can be turned into a twin berth as well. So that table can be lowered. You can turn this into a double berth as well. Old school cassette player over there on that bulkhead. Haven't seen one of them for a while. And obviously over here, you've got a TV uh, as well on this bulkhead. What happens on the boat stays on the boat. Always something to remember. Right, let's go into the uh, the V-cabin forward. Now here you can see the benefit of that raised uh, area on the deck. You get a good amount of headroom uh, down here. The cover at the moment's on that skylight, but obviously when you take that off, you're gonna get more light down here. Behind there, you get access into the chain locker as well. But yeah, nice, comfortable, cozy area. Um, I'll be quite happy, you know, spending quite a few nights on here. There's plenty of room. The whole boat has a very nice, cozy, comfortable feel. You know, it's easy to forget that we aren't on a work boat. This is a private boat, but the capabilities of the boat combined with just the comfort and the practicalities of everything, I think make this a really nice option, especially if you're looking to getting into boating. If you're thinking about buying your first boat, then what better boat to buy than something like this? Because if you go out and you get your weather routing wrong or your weather forecasting wrong and you hit the gnarly stuff, 
at least on this boat, you know you're gonna be looked after. So let's head aft again over here. We have the head, open up this, and the head is a head. So yeah, we've got the toilet there, the porthole, little mirror over there on that bulkhead. All right, let's shut that. Ascend back up into the saloon. Now you might be wondering, well, what about if you wanna have a shower? You're gonna be away for a couple of nights or a couple of weeks, whatever. You're gonna to need to have Adobe. Like that ship's bell as well. But that is where we come back out into the cockpit. And as you can see, this area here can be curtained off uh, and can be turned into a shower. The water will just run away through the drain. Down there, look. But yeah, I really like that. Come out here, you can close this all off, turn it into a secluded private area and have a shower. So yeah, that is that. I like this overhang as well. A little bit of protection from the elements whilst you're underway. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed a look around this boat. I think she's really unique and I really enjoy boats like this. Boats that have that kind of commercial look and feel, especially of this size, I think are really, really underestimated in terms of how much fun you can have on these. You know, a boat that looks like a pilot boat will perform like a pilot boat as well a lot of the time, especially in the rough stuff. Uh, and that for me is what this boat is all about. Going out, enjoying the sea, whether it's the winter, the summer, the spring, whether it's blowing a bit of a storm or whether it's flat calm, uh, you can enjoy the sea on this boat. And that's what boating is all about, right? If you want to find out more about this particular vessel, then make sure you click on the link in the video description or the link that I'll leave pinned in the comments. Massive thank you to the broker from Dean and Holland for allowing me to come on board and of course to the owner. If you've got a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel, be sure to get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details on my micro site. Obviously, you know where I'm going to leave the link. It's going to be pinned in the comments and in the video description as well. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.